home again. We are now in my office. I have a small corner with my work desk. So here's the, where the magic happens. Um, I have my equipment here, an oscilloscope 4 channel. We need this if we need to repair the um, decoder panel from the CD player. Some power supplies, soldier iron, a frequency generator, or my laptop for debugging the CPU. And today I show you the differences between the tape decks. So on top there's my original. I just put a towel in between because there are a lot of scratches already on the devices and I don't want to get more. Um, and on the bottom it's the modified one. So it's here with the cable with USB cable into the laptop so I can debug the CPU. I will show you the differences. Um, it's like plug and play. It just needs to get replaced but it changes a little bit the behavior of the original CPU and the modified one. There are also some new features included and I will give you a short overview um, how this works now. Um, currently revision B is in progress. I already ordered the PCBs just waiting for them to arrive and when we disassemble unit 3 we also uh, try to use the replacement CPU that you can see how easy it is if you have this CPU, just plug it in and, and it's basically working and adds more features to it. So it's kind of a software update. Um, well, so let's start. I'll give you a short overview now. As I said, on top there is the original one. On the bottom there's the modified, which you cannot uh, recognize from outside. Switch on the original one and you probably heard the uh, head was switching to a default position and the default position is always side A. So if you stop at side B and you switch it on again, it's on side A. This is the first behavior which I don't like. So if we switch on the modified one, it's not going to do this. Because if I stop at side B, I just want to continue at side B. You probably also have seen that there is a small scroll text which identifies the modified one. It's only two digits but it's better than nothing. The first thing which was important for me was the timing. I wanted to have the same timing as the original one. If you click here on play and switch the direction so that's quite fast. For the modified one, there's basically no difference. That was important for me. Please, 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 a little bit. Yeah, thank you very much. You probably can see um, we are connected with the USB cable to the CPU, so there is a little bit of debug information running um, that helps me to get all the fine tuning, see which events happen, what function we called, and so on. Makes it a little bit easier. The first behavior I want to show you, which is different, is the music search. So in the original firmware, if you click on play, we can click on next to jump to the next song, but we can only jump to the next song. It's not possible to skip a song. So you can click here multiple times, it does not happen anything. On the modified unit, it's possible to skip a song. You can click multiple times on next. And going, if you want to skip three songs, play with the fourth song. It's now searching. And back.
Now this takes some time. And the same, it's working from in the same way in the previous direction. You can also change the direction during a search. Now it's spinning backwards or forward. So that's different. Another difference is when you forward or rewind during play. So if we are playing and if we click on forward, we need to hold the key. And if we release the key, we're starting to play again, which is quite fine. But if as, as soon as you click on forward, you cannot see that you're in play mode anymore. So it sometimes happens that you just click for a moment and then it starts again. And you cannot hear when a new track begins. So in the modified firmware, if you click on play, and if you click on forward and hold forward, you can hear the tape. Oh, you can see there's a new track. And the play segment is still active. Another behavior is when you rewind the tape to the very beginning. Usually it goes to the very beginning and then stops. So if it's really at the end of the tape, it just stops. On the modified firmware, if you rewind and it's on the very beginning of the tape, it might start for only a short time. But why? Why the hell is it doing this? Because some tapes do have a splice at the beginning and the tape reader does not recognize this as a transparent part of the tape. So it spins forward a little bit until it really reaches the um, transparent part of the tape. But why the hell is it doing this? Does this make any sense? Yes, it does. When you want to record a song. If I click on record on the modified unit, it's now spinning forward to the beginning of the tape. Now found the beginning of the tape. And if we press now on record, we will record the whole song. It's not going to do this on the on the modif on the original firmware. So we are now here on record and we click play or press play. We're going to start the record, but <laughs> we are at the beginning of the tape, so it's a transparent part. And we are not recording anything. So this, the beginning of a song is then missing. Another difference is Another small difference is when you you need to press stop to disable record mode. Um, here you can also spin to the beginning of the tape. You can also click on record to disable the record mode. Another small behavior which is different is if you create a copy of a CD with the auto sync mode. In this case, the tape is taking a four seconds break between the tracks. And the modified one shows you the numbers of tracks you have already recorded. So it's starting with track one, and we can see it's track one already. Stop. Another feature is how to program the playback of a track. In the original firmware, if you are in stop mode and you want to program a playback, you just click on next. And let's say the first, the third and the fifth track needs to be playback. And if you already, when you start um, programming the playback, the tape already spins back. It always makes me nervous and confused. So, that's something I wanted to change and 
in addition it supports only 20 tracks and only one side. In the new firmware it is possible to program up to 40 tracks because I also support the second side. Um, and it does not start to spin back the tape. Only if when you start to press play to play the program. Then it starts to spin back and we can see this with this in the display. Okay, I think there are basically all the features of the new CPU. As I said, it's an AT1284P, another 8-bit CPU that I'm using in this case. And we will have a closer look at the replacement CPU when we disassemble Unit 3. Some minute ago, I've got the new um, PCB. So this will be another episode how we assemble this and as soon as I have checked and tested revision B I will publish the KiCad project and the whole source code. So thank you for watching and see you next time. Cheers! Cheers.